Welcome to the Commonwealth Club of California. Today's program is co-presented by the Climate and Reality Project, Bay Area Chapter. I'm John Zipper, the club's vice president of media and editorial. We hope you are staying safe and are well wherever you are, and we look forward to seeing you in person someday in the future at the Commonwealth Club's headquarters in San Francisco. Until that happens, we are doing all of our programming online. This is the latest in about 250 online programs the club has produced in the past six months. You can find all of our upcoming programs, as well as audio and video from our past programs and information on how you can help support our program production at commonwealthclub.org. Now, if you are watching us live today on YouTube or Facebook, you can use the chat function to post questions for our panelists, and we'll work some of them into our conversation later here today. Now, I want to hand this off to our special moderator for today, Alma Sungi Beck, the Climate Justice Co-Chair for the Climate Reality Project Bay Area Chapter, We'll begin with a land acknowledgement. Alma. Thank you, John. 안녕하세요. 저는 백숭기입니다. Hello, my name is Alma Sungi Beck. My heritage is Korean, and today is the second day of Chuseok, the Korean Harvest Festival. During this time, Koreans everywhere visit our families and hometowns to honor our parents, elders, and ancestral grave sites. It's a time of family and connection and noticing our connections with each other and the land. It seems appropriate during this time of Chuseok, while we're also in the middle of California's worst wildfire season ever, again, that we begin by acknowledging the land and the indigenous peoples of this land that we occupy in the San Francisco Bay Area. The native peoples of the Bay Area have served as stewards of the lands and its living creatures, including humans, for millennia and continue to lead and model in so many ways what we need to know and do to solve the current climate crisis. And so with respect, I wish to acknowledge the Yalamu, or Ramatush Ohlone of San Francisco, the Ohlone bands of Chichenyu and Karin of the East Bay, the Yokut, the Muwekwa, the coastal Miwok, Southern Pomo, Kashaya, Patwin, Mashewa Wapo, and Bay Miwok. We do this land acknowledgement to remind ourselves of the oppression of indigenous people and how the taking and exploiting of indigenous lands and indigenous people is directly connected to the climate crisis. It's also a reminder to follow the leadership of indigenous people here and everywhere as we seek and build long-term solutions to our global climate crisis. Chusok chal chinesunida, have a good Chusok season. And now to the rest of our program. I'm gonna start with introductions of our esteemed panelists and we'll do it in alphabetical order by last name. Dalila Adolfo is a community organizer and 
um, Bayview Hunters Point Community Air Monitoring Project Coordinator at Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice. Dalila is a resident of the East Palo Alto, California and started organizing at the age of 12 when she joined Youth United for Community Action. She was active in the campaigns that closed the Romic Hazardous Waste Plant and in developing the community plan for the future use of that site. She has worked with the California Fund for Youth Organizing and has helped coordinate and strategize a way for California Student and Youth Bill of Rights to be passed. Um, she has many other accolades. I'm gonna go now to Bradley. Bradley Angel, in 1997, um, Bradley joined with grassroots urban, rural, and indigenous community leaders from California and Arizona to form Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice, also known as Green Action. He is currently serving as executive director, and for over 30 years, Bradley has been a local and national leader in the environmental health and justice movements and has helped communities win some of the most significant victories in the history of the environmental justice movements. Prior to co-founding Green Action, Bradley was the Southwest Toxic Campaigner for Greenpeace USA from 1986 to 1997. And he was also co-director of the San Francisco, San Francisco Nuclear Weapons Freeze Campaign in 1985. <clears throat> He's been active on many social justice issues since he was a teenager. Um, Dr. Ahimsa Porter Sumchai is an emergency medicine physician in San Francisco, California. She is licensed to practice in California where she is president and medical director of Golden State MD well Health and Wellness and principal investigator for the Hunters Point Community Biomonitoring Program. Dr. Sumchai is a member of the UCSF Medical Alumni Association Board of Directors and a member of the Stanford University School of Medicine Alumni Association. Uh, additionally, she's a certified clinical nutritionist and strength and conditioning expert Dr. Sumchai has been involved in these issues for many years in the Bayview and Hunters Point, including having served on the Shipyard Restoration Advisory Board. And Sabrina Hall, bear with me for a minute. Sabrina was born and raised in San Francisco Bayview Hunters Point neighborhood. She is a mother of four, grandmother, and a longtime community activist and volunteer everywhere she has lived, including Las Vegas, San Diego and Oakland. She is a member of the Bayview Hunters Point Mothers and Fathers Committee, sits on the Student Site Council, as well as the African American Parent Advisory Council at Paul Revere Elementary. She's a member of the Environmental California Environmental Justice Coalition, Vice Chair of the Southeast Community Council, Community Organizer for Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice, and an active volunteer with the Revolutionary People's Party of Oakland, California, and many others. All right, so let's get started with the panelists. Um, so to this program, as John mentioned, um, is being co-presented by the Climate Reality Project Bay Area chapter. And we did a version of this program back in August for our chapter members. And um, we did it as a way to highlight issues particularly impacting local Bay Area Black communities and other communities of color. And in the spirit of the Black Lives Matter movement to defund the police and invest in Black communities. Um, it, this particular campaign um, really highlights why ending racism is so closely tied to ending the climate crisis. And this one is literally in our own backyards for those of us who live in San Francisco. Um, and so I guess what I want to start with is, um, can you help set the stage for what is this issue about the radioactive and toxic waste in Bayview Hunters Point? Um, who are you? What's your involvement other than the stuff in your bio? Like, who are you? What's your involvement? What's important for this audience to know about these issues um, and how it affects all of us in our communities? So let's kick off with Sabrina. Sabrina, I think you need to unmute. There we go. Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Yep. Welcome to the life of Zoom. But um, my name is Sabrina. Um, I am an active um, advocate here in Bayview Hunters Point, born and raised over 30 years. And um, I'm living the climate reality right now, the racial injustice in Bayview Hunters Point. 
um, during a COVID-19 crisis. And so um, some of my experiences growing up here in Bayview Hunters Point, I have witnessed many of my friends, family members, including myself, um, get many illnesses due to the contamination and the toxic levels and even the food deserts over here. It got me prompted to thinking about climate change and what's going on, because at first I wasn't even interested in anything like this. And I, um, once I started seeing family members and myself getting sick and my children getting sick, I say, hey, well, let me look into this, what's going on. So some of my concerns here in Bayview Hunters Point is of course the Navy shipyard, which is the federal super fun site. Um, I visit that site a lot. I have many friends over there. Even if you don't live in Bayview Hunters Point and you're from San Francisco, everyone has family everywhere. And so when I would go up there, I would just get kind of irritated and upset seeing that the developments are still going on up there. Buildings are still being built. Um, advertisements are still going up about the Lenar housing. And it really bothers me because the testing, the alleged testing is botched. You know, we're not too sure what's going on, but what we do know is that it's highly contaminated over there. It concerns me with the Indian Basin as well, the project over there, how the waters there are very toxic. It scares me. And once I started to realize and learn about sea level rise, and I said, hey, we're over here by water. What would happen if the sea level rose over here in Bayview Hunters Point? I started to talk to my community and trying to get more of my people aware of climate, um, climate changes and what does that mean and how that would affect my community over here. And what I find out that many residents are scared about flooding. You know, if the sea levels rise, it brings more contaminated with contamination over here to our areas, which in turn brings climate gentrification, which a lot of people don't even know about that term. Um, it concerns me a lot. Um, I'm scared, you know, my son has asthma. You know, he was born with numerous allergies. Um, through the Bayview Hunters Point biomonitoring project, I have got, was able to get myself tested and found that I have high levels of platinum in me. I don't even know or can even start to describe what that means for me. I don't even know if those are the reasons that I feel sick a lot or if I'm nauseous or some days I'm weak. So um, it really concerns me that we are forgotten about over here in Bayview Hunters Point. And it's, we've been hit really hard, especially with the COVID-19 crisis. Many people have breathing problems. We still have to wear our mask. Um, I just feel like we're forgotten about over here. And um, it's really sad that our officials, you know, even the Chronicle wrote a newspaper article about how the San Francisco Department of Public Health sent over a helicopter even knowing that the helicopter wouldn't be able to do the appropriate testing for our community. And um, I'm here today just to speak about my plight and my community's plight to let people know that we are over here. We are people and we need the shipyard cleaned up. Um, climate change is very real, you know, and if we stop, if we're starting to ignore it and don't look into the fact and try to change what's going on over here, we're going to be in a terrible um, fix within five to 10 years. And I know a lot of people don't think that it will affect us, but if you don't think it will affect you, it will affect your children. It will affect your grandchildren and the kids that are not even born yet. So we need to fight for them and we need to make people more aware of what's going on here in Bayview Hunters Point and how people are getting sicker and dying. They're not getting better. We're getting sicker and dying and it's just getting worse over here. Okay, thank you, Sabrina. Dr. Ahimsa Sumchai. Uh, my name is Dr. Ahimsa Sumchai, uh, and um, I am here uh, in the role of being the medical director and principal investigator for the Hunters Point Community Biomonitoring Program. Uh, in that role, I want to acknowledge uh, my colleague, Dr. Ramona Tasco, the co-founder. I want to acknowledge my father, George Donald Porter, a career longshoreman who died prematurely at age 58 of interstitial lung disease uh, caused by exposure uh, to asbestos uh, in his occupational setting. 
And um, that the slide that you're seeing is a slide of the community that I grew up, grew up in, the community that Sabrina lives in. I think of it as being the biggest little community uh, in the world. Uh, I love it. Uh, that is the uh, Bayview Hunters Point community and the promontory that extends eastward into the bay that made uh, the Hunters Point Peninsula ideal uh, historically uh, as a shipbuilding and repair port. Uh, it was purchased by the Navy in advance of the United States entry into World War II, and much of the contamination of the peninsula is as a result uh, of Navy uh, activities, including the siting of the United States Naval Radiological Defense Laboratories along the southeastern uh, border. Uh, Bayview Hunters Point uh, is a coastal community and it typifies many of the issues that coastal communities face uh, from uh, disaster um, uh, risks uh, to uh, liquefaction and sea level rise. Uh, there are government regulatory documents in San Francisco that identify and document the risk of sea level rise in uh, disseminating toxins, including radiation and heavy metals and uh, organics that are uh, located uh, along uh, the, the, uh, the border of the uh, shipyard. Uh, the next slide is one that gives us an excellent a view of why this community is so high risk. This is a green action slide that includes the factors that the Cal Enviro screen uh, used to arrive at its calculation that Baby Hunters Point has a score of 90, making it one of the most high risk communities in the state and possibly in the country. Uh, uh, with regard to uh, pollution exposure. And as you can see, uh, the uh, community scores as high as 98% uh, for risk of diesel uh, pollution. As you can see, some of the health effects from uh, exposure to toxic air contaminants and uh, particulates is evident in asthma uh, rates that place it in the 98th percentile. Uh, many people don't know that low infant uh, births and uh, premature births are linked to particle pollution exposure, as is hypertension uh, and heart attacks. Uh, so this slide gives us a sense of the body burden, the body burden of the Bayview Hunters Point community. And that is so important because we're going to be talking about a new field of science called human biomonitoring that is in its nascent uh, beginnings. It's been around since about 1963 when a lead was being monitored in the occupational setting. But in about 1993, the National um, uh, Environmental Exposure Assessment Survey was the first uh, government program that looked at using human biomonitoring in epidemiological population surveys to get a sense as to the body burden of a full community. And that's what we're doing at the Hunters Point Community Biomonitoring Program. The next slide uh, gives us information that supports concerns uh, that Sabrina uh, spoke to. This is one of the most recent graphs uh, of the city and county of San Francisco and the areas in uh, that deep magenta uh, along the eastern border of the city are the areas that have the highest incidences of asthma. One of the things that's very unique about uh, Baby Hunters Point is that you have high incidences of adult and childhood asthma. Many of the medical experts in the audience, uh, I understand that the UCSF Medical Alumni Association uh, sent out invitations, so we may have doctors in the audience uh, know that uh, many people with childhood asthma tend to grow out of it. You know, they get better at using their inhalers. They uh, know what uh, triggers to avoid. Uh, what is unique about this community is the burden of asthma that is seen in the adult population that is seen in people who have symptoms triggered uh, in occupational settings. 
So the next slide is another very interesting uh, slide. It gives us insight into why uh, the 94124 zip code where Baby Hunters Point is situated uh, has such a high incidence of cardiopulmonary uh, disease. I want to take a minute and acknowledge that uh, my dear friend and a leader in green action and uh, someone who has been called the uh, mother of the environmental justice movement in Baby Hunters Point, Marie Harrison uh, died in May of 2019. She died of a condition called pulmonary fibrosis that is linked to exposure uh, to air contaminants. And this uh, a slide uh, gives you a juxtaposition of the EPA um, designation of the areas of the city that have the greatest burden of particle pollution. Bayview Hunters Point has over 20 tons of particle pollution generated every year. Uh, on the right side of the slide is a depiction of various sources of pollution, including underground storage tanks. But the area that it's in bright red, a uh, stop sign red, uh, is the Hunters Point Shipyard. Sabrina referenced it as a federal Superfund site. It is actually a system of federal Superfund sites. The Hunters Point Shipyard uh, in totality is one of the most contaminated uh, properties on the national priority list. It has spawned an additional Superfund site at parcel E2 on the shoreline, which is an area at risk of sea level rise and liquefaction. And then in 2016, the EPA designated a nearby Yosemite Slough, which drains uh, the runoff from the shipyard's radiation uh, impacted shoreline. Uh, so this is a system of three federal Superfund sites that people in this neighborhood are being exposed to. Uh, the next slide is a very interesting slide. This is a slide that shows COVID-19 incidents. It's one of the first uh, graphs that the Department of Public Health um, uh, uh, distributed. And what you will see uh, if you're astute and if you have looked at the other slides I've shown you very closely is that the case rate for COVID-19 incidents is also a highest along the eastern border of the city. It is second highest in the 94124 uh, zip code. Uh, I was very, very inspired in April uh, of this year uh, when Vice President Al Gore became a national spokesperson, one of the first people to voice his belief that there was a correlation between climate change uh, and air pollution and COVID-19 incidents and severe and when uh, I read what he had to say, and when I saw this graph, uh, I wrote to him uh, and invited him to come to Baby Hunter's Point because so many of the things that he uh, is saying, uh, I believe that we are in a position uh, to prove. Um, so the next slide. Uh, is a slide that is from a Navy document. It's called the Par Parcel F Record of Decision. And this shows the areas of the shipyard that are most radiation contaminated. And as you can see, the uh, southeastern boundaries uh, that uh, are uh, adjacent to the South Basin and uh, the actual San Francisco Bay uh, are depicted as being radiation uh, contaminated, that yellow uh, area. Uh, you know, that entire boundary. Uh, as an aside, uh, Alma, there is an area in here that is a Milwaukee Ohlone shell mound uh, uh, location uh, that's been uh, identified uh, in this region. Um, and we should take a minute uh, in honor of the comments that you made in opening in acknowledging that this is the land of the Milwaukee Ohlone people. They are the earliest people uh, in this region and they're contribution to this region uh, is really beautiful. So um, this is a um, enormous burden and risk that this community 
faces uh, at the uh, Hunters Point Community Biomonitoring Program. We are identifying people through a simple urinary toxicology screen that has the ability to detect uh, 35 uh, toxic and nutrient elements who have multiple um, chemicals and radioactive elements in their urine in concentrations that are above reference range to floridly uh, toxic. Additionally, we see people who have toxic levels of um, chemicals like arsenic and toxic levels of radionuclides like thallium. Thallium is a product of the slow fission of uranium that was banned as a rodent killer uh, because it is so dangerous and we are detecting it at a significant frequency. It is detected in shipyard soils uh, in about, uh, you know, a, a 30%. Uh, of detection rate in uh, you know about 1,800 uh, total samples, um, and so we're seeing things like combinations of arsenic and thallium, other radioactive elements. But what is very heartbreaking to um, add to concerns that Sabrina has raised are that we are seeing these in people who have deficiencies in zinc an element that the human immune system is required. Uh, it is essential for human immune system function. Selenium deficiencies, selenium is also an essential element for function of the immune system and the thyroid gland. And we're also seeing deficiencies in elements that are critical to the physical integrity and the strength uh, of the human body like iron and calcium, uh, magnesium uh, and, um, and so uh, and uh, as you would guess, uh, many of these deficiencies in nutrient elements we're detecting in people who live in the food desert, literal food desert, and social service desert on the Hunters Point hilltop. But what has surprised me is that we are also finding uh, these deficiencies in many of the men, uh, male workers uh, at the shipyard. So my final slide is a uh, slide uh, that uh, detect, depicts the um, Hunters Point uh, shipyard and the pattern of distribution that we are seeing using geospatial mapping and pinning of radioactive elements like uranium and cesium and strontium and thallium and vanadium uh, and gadolinium and rubidium. We've got a bunch of them. Uh, some of them are very specific for the shipyard. Vanadium is an alpha emitter is associated with uh, nosebleeds and headaches. It is created as a byproduct of producing high-speed steel tools. Uh, gadolinium uh, is a agent uh, that is associated with nuclear propulsion systems in nuclear submarines. And after the year 1951, submarine repair became one of the major activities uh, at the Hunters Point shipyard. The uh, mapping shows that uh, the people who have these uh, elements and toxic concentrations in their urine are living around the shipyard's historic entrance at 3rd and Palou, and it travels eastward onto the shipyard at the shoreline within feet of that parcel E2 landfill. We've got 14 uh, workers in a building, 830, that was never cleared for human reuse, uh, is radiologically uh, contaminated, is also adjacent uh, to a, a toxic groundwater uh, source. So um, in closing, the next slide uh, just gives us a sense as to the reality that people in Baby Hunters Point have been wearing masks long before the COVID-19 pandemic uh, made it uh, necessary. Uh, in fact, one of the last uh, tips I'm going to make is about uh, the sp uh, special need to think about masks uh, for a population that is at enhanced risk, a, a, a two-layer cloth 
uh, cotton mask is going to block COVID uh, transmission about 65%. But if you've got, you know, particle pollution, 2.5 micron uh, particulates, if you've got, um, you know, other uh, elements uh, in the air, then you have to think about other ways to enhance your protection. This is a lightweight uh, N95 uh, mask. It's comfortable. You could wear it in hot weather. This is also a hot uh, community. And there are filters like this that are cheap. Uh, you get about 10 of them for $5 and it can uh, filter up to 99% of particles down to 0.1 micron and it just feel, uh, fits you know, very, very comfortably uh, into the mass. So uh, that's another uh, issue uh, that's uh, an important area of uh, debate. Uh, and with that, I'm going to uh, uh, pass the uh, program and thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you. Thank you, Dr. Sumchai. <clears throat> um, both Sabrina and Dr. Sumchai mentioned about rising oceans, and um, the Green Action website has a bunch of information about this campaign, but there is a fact sheet that you all have on the website that talked about how there's already been eight inches of ocean rise in Bayview Hunters Point in the last 100 years, and they're um, anticipating another 10 to 17 inches by 2050. Um, possibly sooner because part of what people are finding out is that ocean is rising much faster than they expected in their initial projections. Um, so this would be a great time to turn over to Bradley and Dalila about uh, whatever you wanna add about what you think is good for people to know about this campaign, but also like what people can do about it. Um, there's a way I think that is, you know, it can be hard to keep something in our minds that has so many levels of um, difficulty and harm in our communities because it just can feel like if there's nothing that we can do about it. Um, but one of the cool things about the work that you're doing is that you actually have very specific things that you're working on. So I'll just turn it over to either or both of you. Bradley, do you want to go? Or Dalila? Dalila, why don't you go? Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Dalila. Um, I, yes, so in terms of Bayview Hunters Point having so many um, pollution burdens on them, right, from air to sea level rise, um, it can be disheartening sometimes and, and hard to comprehend and kind of figure out, you know, what to do. Um, my first you know, thing is, is participate in local um, efforts that are already going on um, and support them, um, especially, you know, things like the um, air monitoring project that I'm doing. Um, so I'm working with community steering committee um, residents that will be installing 10 air monitors throughout Baby Hunters Point. Um, I know there are other air monitoring efforts um, also, you, you know, really check your local government, <laughs> um, you know, district supervisors, board of supervisors, mayor, they are supposed to work for you, um, not the other way around. And they're, you know, they're there to, supposed to help community and, and be liaisons to, you know, to get you resources and to, to fill any voids. Um, you know, they're supposed to do that. So, so definitely, you know, hold your elected officials accountable. Um, I'm gonna plug and say, go vote. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, I think just also education, really, um, really educating yourself on what the issues are in your local community, um, what efforts are already being done and, and figuring out what gaps are missing um, and possibly filling those gaps with, you know, yourself, you know, your people on your block, your family. Um, you know, when communities like this exist and are constantly impacted, it doesn't just impact them, it really does impact everybody else because policies, and what have you that go into making Bayview communities, um, you know, disadvantaged, that can, that can be used anywhere else. Um, and if it's not, you know, 
held accountable and not valued, then other communities can, you know, not be valued. So it is an everybody issue, even if you don't live in Baby Hunters Point. Um, yeah, so that's what I'll say in terms of what you can do. Bradley, do you wanna? Sure, uh, again, this is Bradley Angel with Green Action and uh, thanks for all the good information other presenters have shared. Um, not only is there a lot, uh, as Dalil and others have said, that people can do and need to do, it is, time is now. You know, there's so much attention and I'm sure the listeners today, you know, people across the country and the world are very aware of um, what's being said by Mr. Trump and who mocks climate change, is working day and night to undo environmental regulations, makes fun of San Francisco and California is allegedly, you know, so environmentally concerned and, you know, uh, making stuff up about climate change. But as we know, climate change is real. Pollution is real. People are dying, including our colleague, Marie Harrison, as Dr. Sunshai mentioned. You know, Marie never smoked a day in her life. She worked at the shipyard as a young woman. And she lived in Bayview, Hunters Point for decades and she's gone. And so like so many others, um, now is so urgent because, not only because sea levels are rising, but very much because the city and county of San Francisco, from the mayor to the board of supervisors, to the so-called health department, to the planning department, along with state and federal agencies are kind of see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. They would make and are making Donald Trump very proud in my opinion. You know, when you know San Francisco is known as supposedly a hotbed of anti-nuclear, well, if that's true, why is it that elected officials know that there is residue, high levels of radioactive waste from atomic bomb testing, radioactive waste from the secret Navy radiological lab buried at the hundreds Point Shipyard, where our city officials are helping the Lennar Corporation try to get approval and try to get clearance that it's supposedly clean, even though it's not, to build over 10,000 upscale homes. And why is it that these elected officials from so-called liberal environmental climate conscious San Francisco think it's okay and are actually supporting plans as incredible and shocking as it is to leave atomic bomb waste buried at the waterfront of San Francisco Bay, where sea levels are rising. It is insane. It is reckless. People and our bay are at immediate risk. And, um, and they want, you know, it would be near a lot of these upscale homes. It would be near where the hardworking people of Bayview Hunters Point live today. They want to turn it into recreational space as well. It is nuts. And, but it's a pattern in practice that we're seeing right next to the Hunters Point shipyard, much lower on the radar, um, is the India Bay, is India based where green action in the community want to see a clean and healthy park. But amazingly, uh, for those who are naive, um, and people don't know that the Board of Supervisors, backed by the mayor, supported building another upscale development on toxic land. Uh, called the India, and it's called the India Basin Mixed Use Project, and the city's own environmental impact report found that the project would cause significant harmful forever air pollution that would harm Baby Hunters Point residents who are already at risk. Green Action and the Mothers and Fathers Committee appealed it, and uh, the Board of Supervisors rejected our appeal, saying it's fine to actually further poison the people of Baby Hunters Point. The truth has to come out. Um, Thank goodness, due to a lot of people's hard work, uh, and certainly not just Green Action, Dr. Sunshine, Mothers and Fathers Committee, so many other community allies, that you know the truth's starting to come out. The Chronicle uh, investigative team recently, as was mentioned earlier, exposed um, a plot, and they've got the documents from the San Francisco so-called Department of Public Health encouraging the developers at the shipyard and Treasure Island and I should mention a treasure island where people in subsidized housing live on top of and next to in their backyards, radioactive waste. And the Department of So-Called Public Health encouraged these developers to request helicopter radioactive scanning, even though it was known that the scanning would not detect the radiation known to be there. I mean, and Green Action Mothers and Fathers Committee have asked the state attorney general's office to investigate this malfeasance. What people can do? 
is in addition to what Dalila and others have said, you know, email, call the mayor. And, it do, and you don't have to just be a Baby Hunters Point resident. With the contamination of the bay from the shipyard and other sites, everybody is at risk in the Bay Area. Our bay is at risk. So everybody has a right and I think a responsibility. Let Mayor Breed know what you think about it. Let the Board of Supervisors know what you think. You want the shipyard, we wanna see the shipyard properly tested. We wanna see adjacent areas properly tested with independent, reliable community oversight. And that place has to be cleaned up and no housing for rich or poor should be built there. And so um, we understand due to the recent revelations, there may be a board of supervisors hearing possibly on November 10th. Uh, we'll let people know, people come back and check at Green Action, but it's time for action. The sea levels are rising. The radioactive contamination and toxic contamination is leaking. It's exposing people, people are getting sick and dying. and we need, uh, because they're not doing it on their own, we the people need to hold these elected officials from government agencies, San Francisco, regional, state and federal accountable and time is now. Thank you, Bradley. Um, so Sabrina and Dr. Sumchai, did you wanna add anything about what people can do to address these issues? Well, um, hi, this is Sabrina. Um, I just want to really reiterate and just reinforce what Dalila and Bradley said. Get that education out there. Make sure you contact your board of supervisors. Heck, write the EPA. You know, get that education going. Attend some of our monthly task force meetings. Learn as much as you can about climate justice and climate reality. Join the Climate Reality Project Facebook page, you know, and um, just get more information. The more information you have, the better you will be able to um, be equipped with the knowledge you need to fight what's going on. And um, it really hits home for me because um, contamination causes truancy. And if you have children, you know, you don't want your children affected by that. So just basically reiterating what Dalila and uh, Bradley said, get out there, fight, speak up, speak out and speak loud. And I'll pass it on to um, Dalila or uh, Dr. Um, Porter. Uh, I agree with everything that's been said, uh, but I also have to uh, emphasize, and I know that my fellow panelists will agree, uh, that uh, there is a very, very potent role that uh, litigation plays and that we're seeing a lot of action and a lot of response to uh, the risk that people face as a result of uh, litigation uh, efforts. Um, the um, workers at uh, Ground Zero in the post 9-11 period who rescued people and selflessly you know, ran into a burning and collapsed uh, building, uh, many of those workers went on to develop diseases that are similar, very similar to the disease patterns that are uh, evident uh, in Baby Hunter's Point. Uh, and as a result of those exposures, the World uh, Health uh, Center uh, a program, the World Health uh, Program uh, was established. It was established as a toxic registry that allows people who are uh, exposed, uh, who have evidence of exposure uh, to seek a recovery to benefit from uh, medical care and to uh, voluntarily enroll in a personal and intergenerational uh, surveillance uh, to make sure that their kids and their grandkids uh, don't have evidence of exposure. Similar toxic registries are established in the VA system, the nation's largest. I was the attending physician of the uh, Persian Gulf Agent Orange Ionizing Radiation Registry at the Palo Alto VA, and many of you are aware that the children who drank uh, lead uh, uh, intoxicated uh, water uh, in Flint, Michigan, uh, there was a doctor who was doing, you know, what I'm doing. She was checking lead levels and noticed that they doubled uh, in her children in Flint, Michigan. And as a result of that, uh, the uh, Flint, Michigan water crisis uh, was ultimately um, uncovered. And there is a toxic registry there. Uh, I have talked with attorneys who are interested in going forward on a medical monitoring uh, lawsuit uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, but the reality is that this community deserves the establishment of a toxic registry. And if the San Francisco Department of Public Health lacks 
the courage to see that and to do that, uh, then I will do it with the help of people uh, on this panel and many other people uh, who are concerned uh, and um, you know ethical and uh, empathetic uh, to what is going on. But the uh, Hunters Point Community Toxic Registry will be funded uh, through a lawsuit that identifies the United States Navy as being the principal discharger, the most active source of discharges on the base. And with funds that we recover uh, from a suit against the Navy, uh, we can establish a registry that will allow us to relocate people who are living in situations that are uh, dangerous, uh, reassign workers who are in buildings called FUDs, formerly used defense sites. They're along that southeast border. And they were never cleared. They're unsafe. Uh, they're within feet of this radiation chemical, uh, um, you know, uh, intoxicated uh, uh, shoreline. Uh, and it will again allow us to monitor the children and the grandchildren of people who have been exposed and say have uranium levels that are 17 times higher uh, than uh, reference uh, as if there's a normal level of uranium or cesium or strontium uh, to have in your urine. So the biomonitoring work uh, is helping the most important thing that we're doing with the biomonitoring work is identifying people, making referrals, helping to optimize nutrition, helping to optimize um, immune status. Uh, but we are also, for the first time, establishing direct cause and effect relationships between environmental exposures and expressions of disease. And I am uh, proud to say that it appears that the Hunters Point community biomonitoring program is the first human biomonitoring program that has ever detected in aggregate multiple elements that are known to be radioactive in multiple screenings. We have people who have three, four, and five elements uh, that have known radioisotopes. 100% of people we have uh, uh, surveyed have manganese in elevated to toxic concentrations. Manganese exists as a stable element and as, an, as 25 uh, radioisotopes, about 19 of those isotopes are gamma emitters. Gamma radiation has the power to strip uh, electrons uh, out of the orbit of you know human uh, cells and it has the uh, potential to uh, damage uh, human DNA. So the work that we're doing is very, very important. I think that when it is uh, fully applied, we'll be able to uh, help the community that I grew up in, the community that I love, and again, uh, the biggest little community in the whole world. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Dr. Sumchai. Um, we're starting to get um, a bunch of questions in, and a number of them are actually really about this last round um, in terms of what specifically people can do to support. Um, how do people attend the monthly task force meetings? Um, in terms of that first question, what I heard from, from what people were saying was there's specifically a campaign to write the mayor and supervisors, and maybe you could speak a little bit more about that, Bradley or Delila or Sabrina. Um, and then also the thing, I can't overemphasize the importance of not just us having voting plans, but also talking to all the people we know to have voting plans. This is probably one of the most influential elections as it relates to climate and environmental disaster. But let me turn it over to the panel to see if, um, I'm not sure who the best person to answer this would be, but maybe um, Bradley, you could talk a little bit more about the campaign to write the mayor and um, the supervisor. Yeah, I'll well, just say, and Julia would chime in, please. Um, as I mentioned, the um, city and county of San Francisco, from the mayor to the board of supervisors, uh, the health department, but all the way up to the U.S. Navy and the developer, the Lennar Corporation, um, their plan is to leave radioactive, not only to not clean up the shipyard Superfund site properly, and certainly not even to test it properly, but one of the most alarming things is their plan to leave high levels of radioactive and hazardous waste buried at the shorefront, the waterfront of San Francisco Bay and just put a cap on it. And uh, due to advocacy, the Navy's building some type of small seawall revetment, but even if that was a hundred feet high, which it's not, 
um, with sea levels rising, groundwater rises. So we are encouraging everyone, not just in Bayview Hunters Point, everyone who cares about the environment, about people's health, about our bay, about our communities, whether you live in San Francisco or not, contact Mayor Breed, contact the Board of Supervisors and demand that there be proper testing and very importantly, comprehensive and thorough cleanup and get that radioactive waste away from the, sh the waterfront out of the community that's been exposed and uh, as po safely as possible disposed of, um, but away from the waterfront of San Francisco Bay and, and let them know their plans to leave it there are reckless and unacceptable. And on that point, there's actually a sample letter to the mayor that's on the Green Action website um, as it relates. Is that right, Bradley, as it relates to this campaign? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, greenaction.org. You can also check us out on Facebook, Green Action for EJ, Environmental Justice. Um, and Delita, maybe you'd like to talk about a little more about the task force meetings and um, that aspect of things as well. Yeah, hi, this is Delila again. Um, for the EJ task force, we have them every third Wednesday. We alternate between having it at two to four and six to eight. Um, this month will be October 21st from two to four. And please email me if you want to become part of the list where um, our minutes go out, our agenda goes out. Um, and our flyers go out. My email is D-A-L-I-L-A -L -L -A at greenaction.org, Dalila at greenaction.org. Um, and the EJ task force really serves as a body and a space to bring residents or any concerned, um, you know, citizens in with actual government agencies um, to talk about the environmental justice issues within Baby Hunters Point specifically, and um, to talk about the IVAN website, which is identifying violations affecting neighborhoods. Um, we have one for specifically Baby Hunters Point. And um, what, how that functions is Baby Hunters Point residents will um, file a complaint on the website and um, there's problem solvers, I'm one of them, that will investigate or send at least forward that complaint to the appropriate government agency representative and have it investigated. Um, and then the EJ task force meetings, we um, address them there. Um, and as well as we have usually guest speakers to talk about you know, what's going on in, um, in the Bayview Hunters Point community and HIMSA um, Dr. Himsa has um, talked about her work multiple times at the EJ task force um, at the very start of the year before um, Rona shut everything down. Um, we did have a, a shipyard kind of intensive meeting with um, US EPA, DTSC, and residents of the community. Um, so they're very lively meetings um, and very informative. And um, yeah, I invite you all to check them out. Um, Delila, can you tell us again, the website where people who are residents file complaints and how to get, um, if people wanted to get to that? Yes, so the website is www.bvhp-ivan.org. Um, so bvhp-ivan. And Ivan stands for again? identifying violations affecting neighborhoods. Okay, thank you, Delila. Um, uh, Dr. Chung, I just wanna make a ahead, please. point that mm -hmm. there are um, biomonitoring programs in the state of California, the California Biomonitoring Program. There's also a national biomonitoring program uh, that the uh, CDC uh, has uh, funded. And uh, recently the California Biomonitoring Program uh, had a, um, 
uh, a research uh, panel discussion about combining air monitoring with human biomonitoring. Uh, and uh, Dalila, in her role as coordinating the Marie Harrison uh, Bayview Air Monitoring Program, uh, is working right now to identify sites within 94124 to uh, place 10 particulate sensing air monitors. They sense 2.5 micron uh, uh, particles. Uh, and we have been looking for uh, ideal locations uh, to site those monitors if there are residents or uh, business owners, uh, you know, schools, uh, agencies within 94124 who might hold an ear monitor, uh, please, you know, contact uh, Green Action and uh, Delila, and uh, you know, we'll we'll think about uh, that, um, you know, that that potential of having you serve as a host for an ear monitor, which can really uh, be a valuable tool. These ear monitors have to be acted on if they detect exceedances. Uh, in uh, particulates. This is community is also being hit uh, by the California wildfires. Uh, so this is a critical time to site these air monitors. And that's a simple thing uh, that you can do if you live in Bayview, if you've got friends, family, uh, consider that as a really important thing that you can do. Thank you, Ahamsa, yes. Um, Sabrina, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, actually, no, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I think my um, panelists hit on all the points, you know, um, just getting more people involved and active. Hit, hit those task force meetings up. When you go to the doctors, ask questions. Don't let them, you know, just pass you on and say, oh, come to your next appointment. Ask questions. Let them know where you live and let them know that you're concerned. Speak out about you. No one's going to take up for you like you. So that's just my... Um, my little spiel and advice to you guys, speak up for you, find out what's going on, educate yourself. Yeah. Great, thank you, Sabrina. Um, John, do we still have you? And did you, were you gonna ask us a lightning round question or should I just go to the next audience question? He, John's not in the meeting. Okay, so he's not gonna ask the lightning round question. Um, all right, so um, we're, we have another nine minutes approximately till the end of the program. I'm gonna just give a couple more audience questions. Um, there was one about, um, there's lots of healthcare related businesses that are now in Hunter's Point. Do these individuals working in this area have a higher risk um, to their health? Uh, yes, they do. In fact, uh, one of the populations that we've looked at uh, with HP Biomonitoring is uh, a cluster uh, of UCSF employees uh, in Building 830, uh, which is located uh, within feet of the uh, radiation and chemical contaminated uh, Hunters Point shoreline. Uh, and um, we have also evaluated uh, people who uh, are simply working uh, in the environment. And the uh, intensity of exposure is based on, you know, proximity and duration. Uh, if you are working, say, at the Southeast Health Clinic, a, a satellite of the Department of Public Health that is located within feet of the federal Superfund site at Yosemite Slough and within a quarter of a mile of the Hunters Point shipyard and the federal Superfund site at um, the landfill, uh, then you're uh, at risk. Uh, but uh, just like you're at risk if you're working in Baby Hunters Point, you know, there is a swimming pool, there are playgrounds, uh, the Navy documents 25 uh, daycares in elementary schools that are located uh, within a one mile radius uh, of the shipyard. Uh, so it is a, a very, very high risk area. It's over industrialized. It is over uh, developed. Construction dust is contributing uh, now to uh, other sources of particle pollution from uh, mobile uh, vehicles that are uh, on freeways and highways. Uh, that um, you know tr uh, are traverse the community, but we are at a very very critical juncture now. Uh, 
globally, uh, and certainly in this community, uh, with regard to uh, environmental public health. Uh, and it is time for us to prioritize uh, human health and safety, as well as the ecology uh, of the environment uh, over uh, development uh, interests uh, that right now are uh, running rampant and behaving in a manner that is corrupt, uh, if not uh, criminal. Um, polluter pays. Uh, it is time to identify that many of the conducts that we are seeing uh, arise to uh, environmental crimes and polluter pays. Uh, it's time for us to ask these people to pay up and to, um, you know, to develop funds that help uh, uh, promote and protect the health of people in this community. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Sumchai. Um, Bradley, do you want to maybe comment about the you were there was a conversation we had about um, people working in a building in the area where there was high degrees of health oh, issues. Um, you want to talk about that I a little bit? You're referring to the uh, police substation mm -hmm. at the shipyard Superfund site, and Dr. Sumchai, I'm, no, I'm sure knows more about it than I, but. Um, this came to, I mean, I was aware of the general situation, but, um, and it's interesting in this uh, era where, um, you know, we can't breathe and um, systemic racism and police killings of un unarmed blacks. And, you know, people from the old timers, baby Hunters Point community um, have been screaming and, and bring the truth out for years. But uh, a couple of years ago, and again, I do want to acknowledge the Chronicle investigative team, um, they did uh, this bombshell, huge, I think it was like seven or eight page story in the Chronicle, I think it was called Working in a Wasteland. And there's a link to it on our, our website. And what happened was some ex-police officers um, who worked at that site at the Shipyard Superfund site, they got sick, they got cancer and the story one of them spoke about how he went jogging and came back and put his sneakers in his locker and came back in the morning and one of them melted. They talk about how they would look out. Quite a few years ago, there was an underground chemical fire, clearly the result of the disposal, the dumping of a wide range of chemicals recklessly at the shipyard, where again, the government and Lenar want to build all these houses and how they would see the, the smoke and the the multicolored emissions from the underground fire that burned on and on and on. The Navy tried to deny for a while. But isn't it interesting that it took these police officers, not the African-American, other people of color residents, but to get this on the front page. I'm glad the truth came out. And these police and, and police veterans um, deserve justice. Uh, and they need to be taken care of, but so do the rest of the residents of Baby Hunters mm -hmm. Point um, and others who worked at the shipyard. So this is, this is just not a, it's not just a newsworthy scandal. This is a scandal that's killing people. And to me, yes, I blame the Navy. And yes, I blame not just Trump's EPA, but the EPAs before that. And I blame the state, but to me, what is going on at San Francisco City Hall? Mm -hmm. What is going on? And that's why we've called on the state attorney general in the last few weeks to investigate. What appears to me, to maybe I'm wrong, but it appears to me, it smacks of collusion with developers, uh, mega corporate developers, uh, using our tax dollars to protect these giant companies instead of protecting the people. So that's what's going on. And people need to you know, do your own, uh, research about it. There's thousands of news stories at this point, thank goodness, starting to bring the truth out. And again, this is something that a longtime African-American residents talked about and was ignored for years. At least it's hit the front page, but the powers that be in City Hall are still trying to do their, in my opinion, uh, and I deal with you know this every day, they're doing their best to cover it up literally, cover up the truth, cover up the radioactive waste, but leave it uh, so it will harm people for generations to come. And we're working to get the truth out. Okay, yeah. And then there was just, like you were saying, some recent coverage because of the protests that you were organizing. Uh, we have four minutes left. And so I just want to do a lightning round for everyone to say, have like a little bit under a minute to say, what's the one thing 
you want people to either do or remember after listening to this presentation. So I'm just gonna call on people uh, as I see, as you appear on my screen, Sabrina. Um, I want people to do their, educate themselves, do your own research after listening to this uh, presentation. Go ahead and look up the stuff we were saying for yourself and then decide what, where do you wanna be within this movement? Educate yourself. Thanks, Sabrina. Delila. Thank yes, educate yourself and reach out. It's, you know, social media activism is not enough. Um, and I know that we're all virtual and um, shelter in place, but there are still things that you can do. Um, phone calls, letters, um, you know, reach out to organizations like Green Action, other local organizations within Baby Hunters Point, and really, um, really get involved. Dr. Sumchai. Um, I'd like people to refer uh, friends and family and uh, business owners who are living in the 94124 zip code, specifically people who are living within a one mile radius. Uh, of the system of federal Superfund sites at the Hunters Point Shipyard. Uh, I'd like you to come to the Hunters Point Community Biomonitoring Program Medical Screening Office. It's located on 3rd Street at Revere and let us check your urine. Let us check your urine. Uh, because that is a simple thing that you can do uh, that can help yourself. It can also help your family and help your neighbors. Thank you, Bradley. Uh, well, thanks again for uh, having this program and get involved however you can, whether you have time to do something every day or even if you're just so busy or for whatever reason, you can just do one thing, send an email, pick up the phone and call um, San Francisco City Hall, let them or email them, let them know what you think. And and again, you know, it's um, this is an ultimate, you know, not rhetorically speaking. It's a real life David versus Goliath fight. David's going to win. And um, we've accomplished a lot. Uh, Green Action, our community partners. Um, uh, there's a lot more scrutiny of the, the scandalous situation at the shipyard Superfund site. There needs to be more about Treasure Island in India Basin. Please support Green Action. Go to greenaction.org and support us. But most importantly, just speak out. Use whatever tools you have because this is a matter of life and death as well as of justice. So please do something, whatever you can. Um, so my last words, well, first of all, thank you so much to the panelists for your time and your commitment um, and for helping us get the word out. Um, this program, I understand, is going to be something that's going to be on a podcast that can be spread. So you can also spread the word about this program to help educate the people around you, um, to motivate other people to take action in terms of writing and calling City Hall, the mayor's office and the supervisors, um, and also supporting the work of Green Action. So thank you everyone for joining us and for your interest um, and let's keep fighting the fight. Thank you. Bye.